So last episode, I did an intro where I bragged about being above Milton Keynes. I bragged about my position in the table, and then it bit me in the arse during the episode. So we're not going to make that mistake again. But just for the clarity of where I am and the facts, because we have to tell you guys what's happening. AFC Wimbledon a 10th. If you're wondering where Milton Keynes is, and that's the only reason I'm telling you, they're 16th. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the AFC Wimbledon Return to Glory. In this episode, we are carrying on our journey in the Skybet Championship. We are currently 10th, which is slightly above mid-table on 27 points, so looking very, very healthy. I'm not going to get too ahead of myself anymore and start bragging and start saying anything like that. We're just going to play the game and I'm going to explain to you why I think I've done better since the last time I did an episode for you guys. But if for some reason you weren't around for the last episode, you missed two games against Brighton and Birmingham where I lost 6-3 and 5-1 at home. Really embarrassing performance to have in front of the home fans at the King's Meadow. But since then, we have only lost one game. We played more than I wanted to actually. I was planning to stop at the Norwich Brentford game, but I was watching TV whilst playing and I played too many games. So I thought Milton Keynes game on telly at home, that's gonna be a feature of this series anyway. So we just played until the Milton Keynes game. But we had a two all draw against Rotherham, uh, Dave has a party, did rather well with Rotherham before he got fired. We then had Ipswich, uh, who we got defeated by. We then played Burton, who we won 3-1. Hull 2-0 victory. Norwich a 4-1 victory. Brentford, who are in the Premiership in my West Ham save, 2-1 win to us. Wolves we drew to all. And then we played Bood FM's Huddersfield and won 2-1. So today we have two massive fixtures at home. We have Milton Keynes Dons at home, followed by relegated Middlesbrough and then we have quite a tough run anyway after that with the likes of Sunderland, Blackburn, Nottingham Forest and Derby so whenever we do come back in I could be lower down the table again but let's have a look at the tactic which I think has changed my fortunes it's not a drastic change it's a small change but it seems to have shored things up just a tiny bit so basically you can see we're still using the 4-3-3 that we have used through the majority of the AFC Wimbledon return to glory. But now that central midfielder between the other two central midfielders is a deep lying playmaker on defend. Which means he sits back a little more, doesn't push forward and I feel like that has just made my team a little bit more solid. We have wing backs on defend as well. That probably helps, so we have shored up our defence a little bit while still getting players forward to support Della Valle as the advance forward on attack. Okay, so let's get straight into the fixture against Milton Keynes. We're at home. We've not beaten them at home on this series yet, so hopefully this will be the first time. We have Kreisiak in goal with Midas and Dabo as the wing-backs, Beeling and Tafazoli as the two centre-backs with Dean Parrott, Alfie Egan and Jake Reeves as our three man midfield behind Lyle Taylor, Dominic Pollyon and Dalla Vale. Fuster and Sorderland, who has been playing this deep line playmaker role, both cannot play through injuries, which is very, very unfortunate, especially as we're playing our arch rivals. Okay, so we are kicking off and hopefully we can get another big victory over our arch rivals, Milton Keynes Dons. I'm really hoping this formation will perform in front of you guys, because as of yet, Pollyon almost scoring past Martin. As of yet, we've not got a win in Season 2 of the AFC Wimbledon Return to Glory on the channel. So we need a win now. It's against Milton Keynes. What a better time to do it than right now as Egan plays into Beedling. Beedling to Tafazoli. I uh, just commentated on a non-highlight. Okay, we've gone half an hour into the match. For some reason, focus of attacks has moved over. I do hate it when that happens. As Dabo now has the ball on the right as I try and change the screen. Polyon tries to cross it there, almost scores. That would have been a very strange goal. Not been much of a game in the first half, but I like to see that defence hasn't conceded. Please don't say I jinxed it, please. I always say that and then they score. Please stop making that mistake. 
Okay, so I'm just going to look at the match stats quickly. Uh, we have four shots on goal, two on target, two long shots, one clear-cut chance, one half chance. There's two shots that have both been off target, but they haven't had long shots. Possession, we are absolutely destroying them on. Do I change anything? I can play out of defence, because... No. I've... I keep thinking I'm a premiership club. No playing out defence. I don't want to risk it. Okay, so we're going to leave things the way they are. And we will have a quick team talk just to say, push forward, show some passion. And hopefully we can nick a goal or two, get a victory over our rivals, and potentially even climb the table a little bit, which would be nice. This is the kind of game we need to win now, with Milton Keynes in the position they are in. Teams in like the bottom half of the table, I'd say 15th or lower, we need to be beating. Although, to be honest, if we keep up current form, as long as we're safe, that is the main goal of this season. As we will take Lyle Taylor off for Coogans and then swap Coogans with De La Valle and Dean Parrott can come off purely because I do not want to risk that yellow card turning into a red. Okay, we've told the boys to push forward now. Grab that goal. We've absolutely dominated this game but we've not had many good chances as you can tell by the lack of highlights so again we are going to put it wing back support i hope this doesn't backfire on me i really really do and we'll make a substitution we'll change one of the forward players for jack leach and then jack leach can swap with lionel cole come on i didn't want to draw I really thought on our current form and Milton Keynes current form and the way this tactic has been working we'd pick up a victory but it looks like I'm gonna get a ball draw and it looks like I've made my defense more solid but we can't score if that had gone in Cole would have been an absolute hero well whilst finally I've not brought you a defeat on the AFC Wimbledon return to glory that isn't exactly the most exciting game I've ever shown you on this channel. Anyway guys, we will come back to the game against Middlesbrough, also at the King's Meadow, where hopefully there'll be some goals, mainly from us. So guys, I thought I'd just do a little... experiment. We're not at the Middlesbrough game just yet, but what we do have is Huddersfield inviting us to attend an interview as the board wish to discuss with you the possibility of becoming their new manager. Now I have no intention of taking this job at all, but in the interest of finding out about Football Manager, I'm going to attend and be as much of a dick as possible. Okay, so you have very little managerial experience and that obviously concerns me a little. Can you explain why that is? Oh, none of those seem like a heelish move enough. Heel is something from wrestling. I apologise if you don't watch wrestling because that would have meant absolutely nothing to you. I'll just be honest, I've not been in the game that long, so what do you expect? Some people might be inclined to say that you're taking some of a risk by leaving what is to be considered a safe job and looking to make the jump to an altogether bigger challenge. What was the thought process behind your decision? I've managed clubs of this size before. I'm keen to make my way up the managerial ladder. There aren't many differences between the two teams. I have no concerns about making such a move. Don't think there's much to worry about, and I hope you don't either. It's all a matter of perception, really, and none of that should matter to either of us. I'm only concerned with being the best manager I can be. I feel like this middle one is the one that might offend Dean Hoyle the most. There aren't many differences between the two teams. I don't think there are. But I'm an AFC Wimbledon fan, so I'm going to be biased. You seem to be in a loggerheads with your current employers with regards to club philosophies. I don't think I have. Okay, it's not as bad as the media would have you believe. They were asking too, so much of me that our one or two things were bound to go slightly askew. I think the results on a pitch justify not sticking to such rigid philosophies. I feel confident of being able to adhere to whatever philosophy may occur on the time here. I don't believe there's relevance to my potential management of this club. I say my results speak for themselves, mate. The club will be looking for a candidate capable of performing to our expected standards across multiple competitions. Are you confident of handling that better than our previous manager? Oh, I think this one. Completely disagreeing about competition performance and saying it's about the process. We understand the importance of having the right back from team in place when your manager moves to a club, so we're willing to allow you to crest any changes. I'd ask for the biggest budget possible. If hired, we expect you to play a possession-based style of football. Is this something you'd be willing to do? No, because I'd want to get you to the Premiership, and I'm not sure your team can play possession football in the Premiership. 
If hired, you'd be expected to develop players from the clubs you've set up. Is this something you'd be willing to do? I've got to be honest here, because that is something I do like to do, and I find myself doing anyway. Are there any job aspects you'd like us to judge you on if appointed as manager? We'll stick with the ones I always pick. Are there any further philosophies that we'd like to propose? No, no further philosophies. Should you be hired at special club is to avoid relegation? Is that fair or do you think you can improve upon that somewhat? I'm not going to say I can do any better. What do you think of a pro's transfer budget of 7.75 million should get the job? Well, that's a lot more than I ever get at AFC Wimbledon. Much larger transfer budget, please. Much larger wage budget. Do I have any requests? Club youth facilities to improve. I feel it's vital. Oh no, I've been ruled out of the job. What a shame. Okay, so I'm not actually suggesting you do this regularly, but if you're doing as well as I've been doing with AFC Wimbledon in comparison to their expectations, maybe taking job interviews and declaring interest in other jobs can help you because as you can see on the screen right now, Eric Samuelson, the chairman, has said, having heard I could be considering leaving AFC Wimbledon for a new job in the near future, the club would like you to stay at AFC Wimbledon and are willing to consider any changes you wish to propose to the current club vision that would persuade you not to leave. If you agree to stay at AFC Wimbledon, you'd be withdrawn from all other jobs. They're pleased that I managed to meet the current expectations, so it will allow me to increase them if I wish to do so. They make it clear they reserve the right to adjust the transfer wage budget in the future without prior consultation. The current agreed vision is as follows. League expectations fight bravely against relegation. Transfer budget is tiny. Wage budget is tiny. Play direct football. Develop players using the club's youth system. No agreed board requests. I mean, I will still discuss the current vision because there is one thing you know I want to do, which I always do. New philosophy, allowed to sign youngsters. I'm not going to ask for a new contract because this is a fans club and I do not want to take more money than I'm already getting until we can afford it. Decision to stay is wonderful news. We cannot wait to see the future this club holds. Who's the meeting? You know where to find us if you want to talk about anything else. So yeah, sometimes the small threat of a successful manager leaving and it opens doors. Okay guys, it is a big game coming up now. We still haven't had a victory on AFC Women and Return to Glory season number two. We're now playing fifth place Middlesbrough and they have a decent amount of good players. They are challenging to stay in the playoff places or even challenge for automatic promotion. So we have a massive, massive task at hand. We're starting with the 4-3-3 from the last game. Kryziak in goal, Mides and Dabo as the wing backs, Beeling and Tapazoli as the two centre backs, Parrot, Egan and Reeves as the three man midfield behind Dominic Pollyon, Laurie Delavale and Fuster is back in the mix. And I'm looking at their side and thinking George Friend, Forshaw, Westwood, Routledge, decent, decent side. Okay, so we kick things off. How successful can we be here today against the likes of Middlesbrough? at the Kings Meadow Stadium. Fuster is back in the mix. Sorderland, unfortunately, is still injured, which is a real disappointment because he has been absolutely epic in that deep line playmaker role as Dabo plays it forward to De La Valle. De La Valle will play it inside to Reeves. Reeves will play it out wide to Dabo. Dabo holds up the ball, plays it back to Reeves, inside to De La Valle. De La Valle can play it through to someone or he can have a shot and it's a weak, tame shot that goes Quite a distance wide, to be fair. Okay, Polyon loses the ball on the edge of their box. Beedling does not win that header. They now have an attack with Ensu, crossing it in, and we're 1-0 down. I cannot get a win on YouTube with AFC Wimbledon in this season. It's just not going to happen, is it? Can I actually have a season where I do all right as AFC Wimbledon manager, but do not win a single game on the channel? I mean, this is a tough game to win. I was hoping we'd win the Milton Keynes game, but we managed to get a 0-0 ball draw from that game. 30 minutes into this Middlesbrough game, we are losing 1-0. Dabo now throws it into Reeves. Reeves crosses. Polyon gets the equaliser. It is one all. Hopefully, we can pick up a massive, massive victory. But even points in this game will be huge, considering Middlesbrough's position in the table. Reeves gets the ball, whips in a low cross. Polyon just has so much of that left side of the net to aim at, and it is one all. And we'll probably go into half time at one all by the looks of it. We'll tell the boys it was a good first half because you know what it was. We'll keep it up, and we'll obviously make the usual substitutions at 60 minutes. But 
I'm liking the look of this. Less long shots than usual. I'd like more shots on target, of course, but two half chances. Clear cut chance would be good. But I feel like this tactic has done better defensively, but it's hurt us going forward. So the wing backs may be something we change depending on our opponents. But I think wing back defence against Middlesbrough is understandable. Chris Robertson will come on for Beedling, who's on a 6 rating. Dabo is also on a 6.3, but we don't have a right back. Fuster is also on a 6.3 and his sharpness is not up there. So we'll bring on Lyle Taylor. Taylor will swap with Dalavale and we'll give him a cheeky team talk, which should, because they like me, have positive effects. If we can grab a goal, that will be huge because that will give us two points and see us climb up the table a little bit. And it's against a team that are above us. But I'm happy with a draw. I'm happy only conceding one goal in an episode. That would be unheard of for me in the AFC Wimbledon save anyway. Although Gaston now crosses it. Reeves heads it clear. Where is my keeper? Get back and goalkeeper. I could see it straight away when he came out and he got nowhere near it. Wayne Routledge scores from a ridiculous distance because... Kryziak, who I think I should just stop playing because every time I play on YouTube he does something stupid like this. At least he put his hands out today, but he has not been the keeper I was hoping I was getting when I signed him. Make another substitution. Dean Parrott can come off or Kieran Dow, and we're going to have to go for it. We're going to have to try and get that goal. So we are going to go to wing back attack and then have a little touchline shout push forward and see if that can grab us a goal to get us a point from this fixture well that shot came out of nowhere Dolavale with a shot on goal Guzan saves it that would have been nice if it had gone in it would have been nice if it gave me some warning that we are going to get a chance so I could actually talk and they are going to counter now and it's 3-1 we went for it we suffered because of our attempt to go for it and uh, it's now 3-1, we've conceded three goals in a game. But that is better than last episode where I conceded 6-5. and five. So, you know, slow improvements, slow improvements. Kryziak, I'm, I'm going to have to drop him. I don't care if you're meant to be better than Gogic. I have a feeling I'm just going to drop you because of what I've seen. Especially every time I'm recording. Ah, well, you know what? At least we got a point on an episode of AFC Wimbledon Return to Glory. And that will just have to be a plus point for this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in as always. I apologise that I've still not brought you a victory on the AFC Women Return to Glory. But if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. I've been JNO. You guys have been awesome. And remember, it's all about the game.